And we're live, Morgan. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, if you could, in the chat, just uh, let us know if you can hear us okay. Um, just say, yeah, we hear you. We're loud and clear. And um, we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. I see you, RJ. Thank you for joining. Hey, Vivian. Aisha, I see you. Thank you for joining. Happy Thursday. Almost Happy Friday. Thursday. Not Happy that Thursday. it really matters these days. <laughs> hey, Patrice, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> We're just holding for a second. So how you doing, Morgan? How's everything been going? It's good. It's a beautiful day outside. I've been going out to the park to get, you know, to prevent me from going crazy. It's, I'm really thankful the weather's been nice. That helps. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm, I plan on getting out here in a little bit. Right. Let's look at the screen. We have uh, Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. Good to see you. Who are you from across the pond? Nick, how about we put that poll up while folks are coming in? All right. One second. Hey, Davida. Hi, Sue. All right. While we're waiting for people to come in, uh, question. Um, help us understand uh, what it is you do. Are you a coach, consultant, or small business? So you should see a poll that comes up that'll allow us to really tailor in our conversation towards you. Oh, lots of corporate folks. <coughs> ah, you got a lot of corporate people. Of, oh, wait, the numbers are. This is kind of like this is this is like election night coming in. Like it is. It's like election <laughs> night coverage. Right, 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 right. It is. All right, all right. We got some coaches. All right. Uh oh, oh, it's shifting. It's shifting. I know. Small Welcome business. Welcome as you're coming in. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. All right. All right. We'll get started in just a second. Right now, we have a poll going. We want to see who we all have in the room. Uh, today, we have Morgan Wider, um, owner of Wider Style. Um, she's going to be here talking to us about executive presence. So I want to make sure that we just give people time to get in. All right, we're going to go ahead and end this poll. And um, ah. look at the results. Hey, 31%. Ah. Uh, coach or consultant, 22% small business, 45% corporate. And that 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 makes wow. a lot of sense for you, Morgan, based off of the the people that you target within your uh, your core business. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Most of the folks that I work with are in corporate or even um, coaches and consultants. No, this makes total sense. It makes total I, sense for you in your market, right? Thank you for joining so, us. Go ahead, Nick. So, thank you for joining us today. Um, we are here with the remarkable Morgan Weiger. Wider. Morgan is owner of Wider Style, and uh, I've known Morgan. How long have we known each other, Morgan, now for? Gosh, it feels like forever because you drive me crazy, but it's probably... No, you, no, let's be clear. Let's be clear, Morgan. You actually drive me crazy, right? I just literally <laughs> stopped. It feels like I've you've always been my life. I don't remember life before, Nick. It was probably maybe two years now? It, it, for, those, for those of you who are new to our relationship, it, it's almost like if you, if you are familiar with Martin the TV show, it's like I'm Martin and she's Pam. Or okay. this is like the big brother I never knew. <laughs> like, I think like, I think like. Right, right. Hey, Monet Williams says, hello, Margaret. Hey, Monet. Hey, hey Mary, we see you uh, in here. With Good afternoon to you. Um, Davida is a budding entrepreneur. Good afternoon yes, to you as well. Yes, and the good yes. Dr. Shannon Paris. Hey, Shannon, will you please call me? How you doing? Right. You at home, I'm at home, so give your brother a call, right? Um, Vivian, who's another image consultant, I met her in Toronto, Toronto Canada, uh -huh. back in November. So, hi. Very hey, good. So, oh. yeah, Jan says hello also. Hi. So, Morgan, Morgan, help me understand. Um, what is it that you do? What's, so your, what's I, your thing? I help companies and individuals show up 
And by show up, I mean look and feel their best. So my passion is helping people understand the importance of clothes and how our image can really impact our income, how it can impact our feelings about ourselves. It impacts how others treat us. It impacts our performance. And that is just the gospel that I love to share with people is really how what we choose to put on each day can really be a big impact on how we live our lives. Okay. So what, what got you into all of this? What started your journey into you know, first of all, fashion and, and styling, and then ultimately entrepreneurship. Right. I grew up, um, my mother loved to shop. And I, like, instead of going to Little League every Saturday, my mother would take me to TJ Maxx's. And that's what I did. Like, I was just always in somebody's store. And when I graduated on my senior year at Georgetown, I thought I was going to go to law school. And I saw that there was some companies, a company called The Gap. Everyone's shopping at The Gap on Navy. Right, 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 right to work in corporate retail. And I didn't even know that was an option. So I started um, working in corporate retail and loved clothes and loved the business of clothes, but then decided, you know, I want to do something different, go out on my own and now work with people on how do you pick the clothes that are in the store? Like how do you make the best decisions yeah. for yourself and, and really unpacking what those right decisions are for you. So that's how I became a stylist. When did you figure out or when did you find out that you had a, a knack for fashion or you had your own fashion sense? You know, I think it wasn't until maybe 10 years ago or seven years ago, I didn't know that this could have been a job. I just always loved clothes and my friends were always like, you always shop for me or you know what's in my closet. And then I started doing some digging. I'm like, oh, like people get paid to shop for each other people. And right, that's what right. like, I, I, you know, sometimes you often take your own gifts for granted. And that was my, you know, for years I was just thought I liked clothes, but didn't know I could make this a business. Right. Well, I have a question. Uh, Marie wants to know, are you a D.C. native? No, I just went to Georgetown and still have a 202 phone number. I grew up in Minnesota, but I love me some D.C. people. I don't know you grew up in Minnesota. What part of Minnesota you grew up in? St. Paul. St. Paul. OK. All right. Very mm -hmm. good. All mm -hmm. right. So what yeah. are you teaching us today, Morgan? What, what, what should we anticipate on learning from you today? I want to talk about this. We've all kind of been thrown into this working from home culture, and I think it has its perks and its benefits, but it's also a really interesting time. And I want to talk about how we can still show up as our best self um, mm -hmm. with, those, with our image when we're on a screen all day and, and, and how we really show up and look our best. So how do you right. do executive presence um, before when we're just kind of rolling out of bed some days? OK, uh, just some housekeeping things in terms of just everyone. If you're new to brand, uh, preneur brand aid and what we're doing here. Uh, this is an interactive webinar. So uh, Morgan's going to give some presentation uh, throughout the course of our time together. We'll also throw up some offers or what have you. Uh, if you'd like to leverage some of our services or get in contact with us uh, for some advice, uh, we always make ourselves available. Uh, we also want to make you a part of the show itself. Um, if you do have a webcam and you have a microphone, uh, you are able to participate. What you do is you raise that uh, your speak button or that speak can, and uh, we will acknowledge you when we get into the Q&A pieces, and then your face will pop up on the screen for everyone to see. Hey. Now, you don't want your face to pop up for everyone to see, right? You might want to just stick to the chat room and we'll do it, but I want you to be a part of the show as well. So whatever you got to do to put your little scarf on or, you know, put a little, you know, get a little crust out your eye, go ahead and do that, right? Because we want to see you. OK, absolutely. Nick, can right. we do that um, poll with uh, who's in the room gender wise? I can't. Yeah, listen, we certainly can. Morgan, give me one second. OK. All right. Um, quick poll, just so Morgan knows, male, female and or other. Right. Uh, yes. Who do we have in the room? Oh, this is what I know already, Morgan. I know this already, but, you know, we're going we gonna to do the little poll to see. Right. Yes, oh power of the girl. But yes, thank you, gentlemen, for showing up as well. All right, there is definitely some information for the guys in here as well. Um, right. So, 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 needless to say, I'm gonna just do a, a whole lot of listening today. I'm gonna <laughs> mind my p's and q's. I am not about to get in trouble. I'm gonna need you for a little bit. I'm need you for a little bit. But let's let's go ahead and get started with the slides. And the okay, first thing. I present is often like what is executive presence and there's like this vague term that everyone is like throwing it around like you you know like work on executive presence and a lot of us brown people and sometimes uh everyone has been said like you just don't have that executive presence and 
it can be a hindrance to a lot of us when we're even showing up at work, but even more so when we're on a webcam. And mm -hmm. how I define executive presence is two things. It's one, it's all about being present. It's about really being in the moment and being present to who you are and who you are as a person, your gifts, your skill sets, what you bring to the table, what you bring to each meeting, but then also being present to your audience and being aware of what they need and what your skills and your special gifts can give them. So if you kind of just peel back the layers of this vague term of executive presence, that's the thing that I always encourage people to start off with is who are you and what do you have? And then how do you then share that with your audience? And so that's the biggest grounding for what I want to talk about um, with executive presence in general. But then today it's really focused on how do you use your wardrobe and your image to to own that. And when it's coming to when it's talking about executive presence, a lot of times there's things about, of course, communication skills, there's um, eye contact, all of those things. But for the purpose of today, I really want to talk about clothes and how those how what we wear impacts how people see us and how we behave. So there was a study at Northwestern University where 100 grad students were, uh, half of them were given a white doctor's lab coat and the other half were not were wearing the regular clothes. Those, um, all 100, 100 students went to take a test and the students who were wearing the doctor's coat, quote unquote, performed 50% better than the students who were not wearing the doctor's coat. So the study concludes that clothes have a, power over not only how others treat us, but how we think of ourselves. So when we get dressed each morning and even when we're working from home and putting on our work clothes, we tend to perform better than when we're wearing our pajamas or sweatpants or things that are not associated with performance. So this is a huge study and I'm sure some of you guys have even experienced this yourself when you're not feeling so great. And you know, ladies, if you go, you know, if you go into the mirror and put on a red lipstick, like your mood instantly boosts. That's all what they call enclosed cognition. It's literally about your body being aware of who, like it's game time. It's putting my lab coat on, putting my red lipstick on. Gentlemen, I might be putting your Jordans on, whatever that is, and getting ready to go and perform. So that's what we'll really be talking about. This is not about putting on a full suit every day when you're working from home. And it's not about staying in your pajamas. My goal today is to really help you find the middle ground of how can I show up in my best self um, and really be comfortable, but also still be professional so that my performance doesn't suffer and I'm still in a game game frame of mine. So any questions about that before we go on? Okay, I will keep going. So what we'll be talking about today is first investing the time. We will just do a really quick thing on like why this is important. So a few things to get your mind ready to go. And then the three C's of working from home wardrobe, which is completeness, color, closet creativity. And those are the three. And then we'll be taking questions and, you know, giving you guys some ways to work with us. So that's where we're headed. First thing is establishing a routine. It's really easy for us. And again, there's so much going on in the world. There's a lot of energy and this, this, time of uncertainty that can make things very nerve wracking. And a lot of us have anxiety and, and, and it's, it's very easy to kind of the days can blur together where you're getting up out of your bed, going to your desk, or, you know, a lot of us are under stress of needing to homeschool our kids, taking care of a loved one, getting groceries, staying, like it's, it's a whole lot. And the way that a lot of doctors and psychologists are encouraging us to stay sane is to establish a routine. And so taking some time for yourself in the morning, and that's maintaining your schedule of, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of prayer and meditation. If it's going to the kitchen and making yourself a cup of coffee, whatever those small things that were your norm before this happened, before kind of life kind of got upended for us, try to go back and do those things. Like establishing five to 10 minutes for yourself is so important to keep you sane and grounded and not and try to combat as much of the stress anxiety that's totally understandable what's going on right now so a few ways to establish your routine first one is for the gentlemen i know y'all can't go to the barber <laughs> like i've seen some things but get groomed as best as you can so if, like i talked to nick yesterday and he's like any self-respecting man owns a set of clippers um <laughs> i don't have this problem i'm good Right, you, like, 
I'm so sorry. Balls are winning right now. Y'all are absolutely winning. But whatever it is for a guy, if it's this is, your beard, this is my season. <laughs> So for guys, what does that look like for you? If it's shaving, if it's just, again, making that effort, doing as much as you can with your hairline, if it's putting the wave cap on, if it's slicking things down, whatever you need to do to, again, show up looking like you're like as much as yourself as possible is really important. So again, spending those five to 10 minutes shaving and, and doing those things is really important to get groomed. For us ladies, same kind of thing. Um, Put on your face and it doesn't have to be a full face, like no disrespect to all of the Instagram move or videos that I've seen with the makeup artists and, you know, they're like natural beat and it looks like a whole lot, but do like a five minute face. So if that's whatever that looks like for you, for me, it's concealer, blush, lipstick, and my brows are bananas right now. So I, I need to just put some clear gel on to, to, to keep them from going all over my face, whatever those five minute, like, a few things to just give yourself polish when you're on a screen like this up close and personal can really make a difference. So again, this is a part a part of your routine and establishing that time to yourself to present and show up as your best possible way. Let's talk about our crown, ladies. Like for some of us, we can't get to our hairstylist the way we want to. You know, times are real right now. So putting on your crown and whatever that looks like. So here are a few examples of some five minute styles, again, to get ready for your webinar. I love the um, using a head wrap um, to tie it in a cute way, like a headscarf, barrettes, braids, a headband, a bun, whatever you need to do to just, again, own your beauty and still feel like your best self when you're up close and personal on the screen. So whatever you're putting on your crown on, it could mean putting on a wig, like that's absolutely something that's easy and easy to be done and not think about whatever that looks like for you just owning putting on your crown any questions or comments about doing this kind of five minute routine before we go on hey morgan yeah um why don't we do another poll real quick or well, matter okay. of fact let's go ahead and pull up one of your offers uh because i think it's a great time okay. uh, morgan actually has uh several different offers available uh, for individuals um, right now. The first one that we're going to pull up, Morgan, is um, the one where you are doing your free, or not free consult, but you're doing a, a consult. Uh, mm -hmm. that yep. So this you, is... Morgan, can you explain that one for us real quick? This offer is a personal brand offer. And what this is, is I have a style assessment that I give my clients that talks about your professional goals, your personal goals, what do you want to be known for? And we will then spend 30 minutes assessing that and helping you build your executive presence and your executive brand. So patient styles, styles you want to be aware of. How can you show up as your best self on screen, but also when we do, when outside opens up again and we get back on there. So that is a 30 minute virtual session where you'll have about 15 minutes to do the pre-work and then we'll spend some time really going through who you are as a person and your goals. And that's $50. And you can click right. the link to schedule at a time. Yep. So we have that up there. And then also, uh, let's go ahead and do a poll, another poll, the last one. Uh, but I thought it would be an interesting one based off of the subject <laughs> that we have right now. And the question is, who's actually wearing pants right now? Real pants. Not just real sweat pants. pants. Not just, but like, <laughs> or, or, or basketball shorts. Real pants. Oh, 50-50. <laughs> All right, all right. So all okay, right. this is good. We got okay. We're well, like most see, of y'all. Now, 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 see, see Morgan, Morgan, if, if this was an audience full of guys, let me tell you right. something. Like, It'd be more like, a good thing. <laughs> please, please. All right, and it we we ended up with forty four. Yes, ah, fifty five. No, look at that. Look at that. No, all right. Fifty five. No, fifty five. No. Right. Into right now, which is to get dressed completely. This is the perfect, this is my one request for so many of us. This is an image of Charles Barkley, um, who is notorious for being on national TV in boxer shorts or basketball shorts and sneakers with a full blazer shirt and suit on top. And I encourage everyone to get dressed completely because you never know what might happen. Like if you're on a webinar and your dog needs to go out or the doorbell rings or the microwave goes off, something happens, you have to stand up and you literally might be asked out. Like we don't want that, like put on some pants. So it doesn't necessarily mean, again, 
full on clothes, but like being aware that your bottom half can be seen on camera occasionally. There's a story that I've, I read of a recruiter who was actually interviewing a gentleman for a, a job in consulting and he did the Charles Barkley move. He stood up and saw his pl and she saw his plaid pajamas and he lost the job, the job opportunity. So this does matter being aware of what that is. And we'll do some examples. So for gentlemen, again, this isn't about putting on a full suit, but get dressed, like put some real clothes on. So um, Nick is really great at this. He'll just do a white t-shirt or a t-shirt and a blazer. And again, a pair of jeans, maybe not the belt, but something that's not a pajama pant. Um, this gentleman here with the button down shirt. And then some days it's still cold outside, putting on a layering like sweatshirt, um, a nice sweatshirt. This half zip mock is a great option. Polo shirts for men are absolutely money. If you wanted to do like one of your khaki shorts or a khaki pant, even something that has a little bit of an elastic waistband, that's a great option. And also like your short sleeve denim shirts or short sleeve dress shirt still looks so much better. And he again has on like a khaki pant. So trying to get out of the sweatpants, A, because you will feel better and B, because just in case you have to stand up, you still have an entire look going on. For the ladies, we have a few more options. So of course for us, you can just do like a really great colored blouse and we'll talk about color in a second. But I also love one pieces. So like a dress, this is a t-shirt dress that I found on Macy's website for $25. One done, if you stand up, you're okay. A jumpsuit is another great option. Again, back to that one and done piece where you don't have to think about what matches, what doesn't. And if you stand up, you're okay. And then also this is a set that I found from ASOS on sale. So I love like knit pencil skirts or knit kind of comfy skirts. You can still move in them. They're really comfortable. Um, and then you have like the matching set that looks way more polished than uncomfortable. So again, putting on some type of full fledged outfit is really important just because you never, never know. And also because you'll feel better. I've been reading some reports of gentlemen and people who are actually putting on real shoes to um to, to work from home. I'm a little on the fence of that. You know, I think I do know that once it's time to go back outside, my feet probably won't know what to do in high heels again. And we'll see how that goes. But ladies, this is also a great chance for you to break in shoes that aren't comfortable for you. So when I take my shoes to get repaired by my shoe guy um, and or to stretch my shoes out, he always tells me to break in a pair of shoes for a week before you wear them by 30 minutes, wearing your shoes for 30 minutes around the house, on the couch, the leather of the shoe will mold to your feet. This is true for guys too. So this is a great time to make some shoes that you haven't been wearing, test them out in your home, get them comfortable. And when you're wearing shoes, it's again, part of that psychological mindset of, okay, like I'm getting ready to get into work mode and game mode. So that is a definite option to break in some shoes. I have to say this, but ladies, um, we have to put on bras if we're gonna get on the work, working from home from the Wi-Fi perspective. Our cameras are usually right at our chest. It doesn't have to be our big you know, push-up bras that are not uncomfortable, but finding something to support your boobies. Well, well then you're about to lose people on that one. You're about to lose them. <laughs> I feel them about to fall off. I feel them about, I've, I've, seen, I've seen so many text messages from people saying, Oh, I'm so, I might not ever go back to work. I don't have to have, wear a bra or <laughs> do my hair. Oh my God. It's at, keep... here's the thing. So this is, yes, when you were just lounging at home, fine, you know, let, let, let the girls be free. But if you're getting on a webinar and again, if you stand up or you move, there's that chance. So something that like whatever works for you to support yourself. So this is a great example of like, uh, like a shelf bra, some of these more like lacy, like camis that are more comfortable. There are tank tops that have built in support in them. Do something because again, when, when video is at chest level, you want your boobs to also be at chest level and not anywhere else. So find a bra that actually works for you or something that supports you. That's really comfortable. All right. Hopefully we didn't lose everybody with that one. The next tip that I have is to choose color. Um, I think it's really easy for us, and again, in these kind of trying times to be focused on blacks, grays, sweatpants, loungewear, but color is something that is so important when it comes to inspiring and, and making us and also our audience feel better. So there's a lot of studies on color psychology, and if you are aware, like when you walk into a room and a room is painted blue versus painted yellow, you feel a different energy. The same goes for our clothes. So when you're working from home or even in real life, when we get back to real life, 
choose colors based on what you want the action to be or what you want to inspire in people. The performance of Olympic athletes, I think a couple of years ago, and it found that the athletes who are wearing red were far more likely to last longer, have more endurance and place higher in the Olympics than, than wearing other colors. Red is a power color, it's an energizing color. It literally makes our blood run hot. So when you're wanting to inspire action, wear red or orange or yellow, those kind of warm based colors. On the flip team is really stressed out and feeling like, you know, there's a lot going on. Wear cool base calming colors. So light blues, purples, greens. If you look at the slide, for example, same gentleman on same gentleman in the slides wearing orange versus a blue sweater. The vibe that he's giving is totally different. Um, the energy that he's emitting, if you kind of look at it, you feel differently. So um, this has also been scientifically proven, and I don't want to make too much of a stereotype, but generally, men, when your when your audience is men or your man or your decision maker is a man, it's usually better to wear red or those warm base colors because men are hot blooded and they res and they respond to action. There's a reason men love women in red dresses. And if your decision maker is a woman, wearing blues and greens applies or resonates with the woman's intuition. We don't like to be pushed and forced into a decision very quickly. We like to feel calm and try to think things through our intuition and the blues and greens speak to that. So base, being really strategic with what colors you're wearing to your audience is about owning your executive presence. Stay out of neutrals. I think, again, this goes back to, you know, of course, color is something that's really important, but also blacks and whites do not film well when you're on working from home. So this is an example, you probably can't see it too well, but a white shirt based on your lighting, based on the camera can be very see-through. So if you're going, ladies, if you're going to wear a white blouse, make sure you have a scarf on top or a layer so that things don't get see-through or making sure that you have, um, an undershirt gentleman underneath. But if you kind of look at like most people on TV, very rarely are they wearing white because white absorbs all of the light and can become very see-through. On the flip side, black can also be very harsh. So you can come across looking kind of flat-faced and dead on screen. So it's really important to try to avoid wearing all black because you the energy that you're emoting isn't a good one. And sometimes depending on your black background, you can literally fade into the black if you're wearing all black. So Taking a cue from news reporters, solid, bright colors are your best bet. Another example of what not to do is do not let your shirt do the talking. So again, if we're on, whether you're in a webinar, if you're getting a photo taken, you don't want a logo on your chest because the eye will go to your chest and not to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Nick had on a branded t-shirt today earlier on and I was like, you have to go change your shirt because it's distracting. You want people to focus on you and not your not what you're wearing, right, Nick? But but Morgan, does it, Morgan does this really apply to guys though? Like literally, yes. does that does that because the like, whole you know? Example, and this is for photographs and webinars. It's not talking about in general, like when you're going, you know, when you're going out. But you always want when you're speaking, when you're getting photographed, when you're when you want the attention to be on your words and you. You don't want any distraction. And like this is example for especially for women, you don't want any mm -hmm. other distraction on your chest. He, like, you know, we complain that men only look at our boobs. Well, wearing a graphic on our chest kind of doesn't help the cause when we're trying to present and be taken seriously. Um, again, when we're also on a webinar, if there's something like that champion logo, you're only going to see part of it. And so most people are going to be trying to focus and zoom in. What does that shirt say instead of listening to what you're saying? So right, got it. that's why do not let your shirt do the talking. Solids are absolutely the best bet. Another thing is to not do too many prints when you're on camera in any way. So if you look at these images, the eye is going to all of this busyness. Like this is a blouse that, you know, could work for, you know, a great, you know, a great thing to have in your closet when you're in real life. But on again, on a webinar, those prints can be very busy and the eye is, is, is going to the print. I know everyone loves Tiger King. This is an example of like a tiger printed shirt. It's just too busy for being on screen. If you're going to do a print or pattern, make sure that it's very clear and that it's not too busy or distracting. So if you look at um, news or sports reporters, sometimes they'll do stripes or checks, but they're very clear and not very busy. So just making sure that more solids and brights are way more to your advantage than a lot of print, a lot of print and pattern right now. So here's a few examples of um, creativity. So now that you're home and you have time to hang on your closet, 
Wear some things that you normally haven't been wearing. This is a great time to say, does this still fit? Do I still like this? Try it on. You're going to have it on for a few hours or for, for the webinar and then put it away if you don't like it or give it away. So this is a couple of examples of my own clients getting creative with what's in their closet. So the orange dress that a client had. So we just did a necklace pair that with. And of course, you're not putting on a purse right now, but these are ways to wear things that are in the back of your closet that you probably wouldn't have worn. That dress is a great example of something one and done to really be professional on a webinar. The pattern of the two shirts in the middle might be a little busy for a webinar, but they're a great, again, example of trying on plain in your closet. The necklace that uh, she's wearing and the image on the left is a great way, again, to make a statement. And then pearls and a camel sweater and red pants are a good way. So going into your closet and shopping your closet and kind of digging up the things that you haven't normally, you aren't wearing. It's been statistically proven that uh, Americans only wear 20% of what they own. So like usually you're kind of going to work every day, relying on your same black pants and your same white blouse. This is a great time to really try and play with new things. Um, and so that also includes accessorizing. So in the in the theme of insecure being back, gentlemen and ladies, this is a great time to play with your accessories. Lawrence here has like a pocket square. So like if you are gonna wear a blazer and a t-shirt, or blazer and a white button-up shirt, sticking a pocket square in can absolutely help again with the exuding executive presence from a webinar perspective. Um, and then also Issa Rae does a great job with this necklace here, like bunning the shirt up, putting a great necklace on, putting an earring on and a fun lip is a really good way to have some fun. I will caution, glasses can be a really great accessory and you know can hide you know under eye bags, but they can be a little tricky with lighting in, in the webinar, you might get a reflection. So just be aware of that when you're when you're setting up your computer that you're, it might be hard to see your eyes. So if possible, um, if you need your readers, have them on when you're reading something, but then try to take them off so people can still see your eye contact when you're talking to the screen. Hey, Morgan, I'm gonna jump into the, yeah. uh, uh, the comments real quick. Um, first of all, I see a couple of people are saying the screen is frozen, can't no. see. Um, if you can see everything or if everything is looking good to you right now, if you can just say yes or no real quick for me, because I want to make certain that you have a great experience. You can't see the slide from insecure. Okay. So that's where it froze. Okay. Hmm. So we're getting mixed reviews. Okay, Morgan, why don't you jump out of the slide deck, okay, and then jump back in it again, okay? Stop, right. slide presentation. Can you guys see me now? Yeah, we can see you just fine. We can see you. Okay, All right. cool. I'll let folks, okay, folks are refreshing. Right. Also, you'll notice that there is a, a button at the top of your browser that says reconnect. If at any point in time in the, in the, um, uh, the 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 presentation you have some issues just go ahead and hit that reconnect button and it should um, fix that for you as well. Okay. Yep. Lyndon says she hit the reconnect button now she's up and going so everybody seems to be um, up and going for some reason they're just having to hit the reconnect button a little bit. You no, know, that's just kind of like how the world is right now. We just gotta reset a little bit. We fresh. reset a little bit. You got reset, it. Reset and come back better. Yep. Like. Right. It's just how how things are going. While we're doing this and while we're waiting for Morgan to jump back into the, the presentation, I do want to throw up another offer uh, that she has. That this next. particular offer right here, she's talking about, you know, going in uh, in terms of uh, assisting you with your closet. And uh, I'll put it up real quick, Morgan. Give me one second. There we go. You should see the offer up there. So all you have to do, all you have to do is hit that button to schedule and um, Morgan will actually work with you and help, you know, you put together outfits, et cetera, in your closet. I can tell you firsthand, I've had a lot of my clients um, uh, do this with Morgan and it has been, you know, I, all I can say is what I've heard are nothing but great things in terms of, you know, her eye and being able to, you know, help you to resee your wardrobe. Sometimes when you're in your own closet, you see it all the time and mm -hmm. you're just so used to putting the same stuff together. But it's always good to have a fresh eye and a fresh ear. And Morgan is just very good in terms of doing that. So 
uh, take a look at that offer and uh, give it some consideration. Morgan, go yeah, ahead with the rest that, of the presentation. And that's exactly where I was going to close with it. That, that, um, that offer is what we would do is an hour of you be on Zoom or on FaceTime in your closet. We would see what you already own. This is also with you taking that assessment that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I would say, huh, you have nothing but black pumps um, or where is the color? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and what that would, so we would spend an hour in your closet and I would help you mix and match virtually. And then the cool part is after that, I'll create my own suggestions, shopping suggestions for you. So this would be your own shoppable online closet where you'd have tons of options to shop from. There's so many sales going on right now, like retailers are running 40, 50, 60% off. So you can get some really great deals. You would then shop for the items I suggest. And then we would have another zoom call once those items arrive to say, okay, this worked, this didn't work. What do we need to alter? What do we need to like, now that you got that pair of red pants, I want you to pair that with that blouse that you have in your closet. So it'd be another hour session to to, to make sure that you're feeling functional and great for webinars, but also when we do go back outside. So that offer is $350. And you can, when you click the schedule, the link, you can find the time and then um, purchase there directly. And Tanika um, um, hit up and said, yes, do it. Tanika Thank is one of our brand new. Yes. Tanika had a whole lot in her closet. She said, I have nothing to wear. And we found a whole lot of things in that closet. <laughs> like, she sure did. And it turned out it turned out very nice. It turned out very yes, nice. Yes. And Marie is saying your closet's full. I just need to know what's what to wear, what's in there. That is absolutely if you want to message me, we can do a session where it's just us playing in your closet and not shopping for um new things. Um and then you can't see the oh Vivian says she can't see the offer. All right, go ahead, Vivian, why don't you hit re reconnect again? And when yeah. you hit reconnect, it probably will show it up again. Okay. Yeah. And I think and I'm going to try I will click back through here. Oh, so we're back on. I can start this slide. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to show this slide that I think where we lost some folks. This is okay. an example of the audience or some probably some folks in my client of mine who playing around with stuff that's in their closet. People, we have way more than we think we do. Um, and so how do you get creative with what you are wearing? And the biggest way, again, for webinars is accessories, accessories, accessories. So hopefully you can see this image now. But the yeah, pocket see it now. Okay. So Nick, I know that you do you do really blazers and t-shirts really well. Throwing a pocket mm -hmm. square in, add some color and adds, you know, makes it just look a little bit more polished when you got to go and close the deal. Um, Issa Rae here with the necklace. She does the button up all the way to the top and then a great necklace studs um and when i will encourage people like, and you and i to talk about this nick when it comes to accessories ladies um pick one so pick, pick one, one area so often i'll see like a woman with like a really big necklace on and then a big dangling earring and when you're talking the person or the audience is trying to look all over the place like the eye is going to the earrings it's going to the glasses it's going to the necklace this example of Issa Rae is a really great one where you're just going to focus in on the jewelry that's the necklace and there's not any other distraction. The necklace complements her face and is not distracting. So when you're putting on your jewelry, especially for a webinar, pick one. Pick a great earring. Like I have a pair of earrings on right now. I did not do a necklace as well. If you're going to do a necklace, do a stud. But less is definitely and this has to be. This has to be the one of the biggest points of confusion with some of the female clients that we leverage with in terms of yeah. they you know they they have these nice big earrings that they want to leverage and then they have you know a nice big piece and it wasn't until I really started interfacing with you that I started seeing it for myself that it could be an actual distraction if you have too much stuff because as from an image perspective I always want there, there to be concentration on the eyes myself because that's what that's what you know really helps to define a, a personality and um, that if you have all of those things distracting, it just doesn't work. Exactly. And that goes back to what executive presence is. It's being aware of who you are and being aware of what the audience needs and not needing. And you don't, you want to make sure your audience is seeing you and all that you have to offer and all of your skill sets and not being distracted by too much bling, too much print, too much pattern, sure. especially in this confined space of working from home. There are a million distractions that we have. There's laundry. There's what's in the crock pot. There's um, you know, homeschooling our four-year-old, like all of those things. So the more that you can own your executive presence on screen and keep the audience engaged is really to your benefit. Hey, um, Morgan, we are, um, Lyndon has a question. She says, Let's what advice it. would you give an executive professional woman 
who is top heavy and always in front of a camera. And it shows she's a little uncomfortable in blouses or tops that are cute and a tad low. That's a really great question. And thank you. Thank you, Lyndon, for asking that. So a few things. Um, yes, Eloquy. Someone has read my mind. Eloquy is one of my favorite stores. Um, if you are if you're plus size, I'm not sure what your size range is, Lyndon, but they have some amazing blouses that are flattering and you don't have to worry about the buttons gaping. Um, you also do not want to. Oh, Lyndon is a guy. Gotcha. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm a he. Wait. What am I missing here? He's a, he's a, he's a, I'm a he, Mr. Nelson. But why is it? And so given an executive professional woman, though, if she, oh, so if she's top heavy. Oh, so you're asking for someone else. This is like call a friend. From a okay. guy's perspective. Gotcha. gotcha. Guy's perspective. Okay. Um, oh, tricky. Excuse me, Lyndon. My bad. Yeah. Sorry. This is, um, this is a tricky one. I would suggest having the conversation of, not keeping things clean and simple. And so if the woman is wearing something that is a V-neck, it might just be, you have to say, you know, this what wearing can be a little distracting and just say it like that. And 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 <laughs> for I've, I've had so many male clients of mine, you know, or, or male executives ask that question. It's very, very tricky, um, but it's even if it's in a general, like as a team, here are some guidelines, please wear things that, you know, like, making sure that we're all covered, like making it more of a general team thing that hopefully she then gets versus pointing her out specifically can be an issue. And if, and if it continues, you may then need a female counterpart of yours to then speak. There you go. Bringing somebody in to assist with that conversation. Speaking the conversation. Because, you know, from, from a guy, and I've had that, that issue before. And from a guy's standpoint, you just have to be very careful in terms of just how you approach some of those things from from an HR standpoint, it's always good to have someone else, you know, not to say that you can't be the leader and, and, you know, talk it through, but always have someone else in the room with you to have that conversation. So you have a second set of ears yeah. to make certain that you're, you know, everybody agrees that it's being appropriate. But I think that's excellent advice, Morgan. You always start off first with making it a team guideline yeah. um, so that nobody feels like you're pointing directly yeah. at them. But if it still occurs, then you know, going in and just having the conversation, but having a second set of ears as a part of that, just to protect you. Just to protect you and to protect her. So she doesn't feel like she's, you know, being. Correct. Beaten. Correct. Um, for the ladies who are, and it's hard. And I will say like, it is absolutely, you know, if she sends her videos prior to sharing and see those comfort and rise, that's, it is absolutely a challenge, you know, have her reach out to me or, you know, say that you did this webinar. I'd be happy to give her some tips. Um, because if for the women who are busty on on here now, you actually want to try to downplay your top half as much as possible. So I would avoid anything that is ruffly, anything that has a lot of details on the chest, because again, that eye is going to go here. And it really is about getting a right bra that's fitting, like bras that kind of hold you in and suck you in so you're not spilling over. And then if it is a deep V-neck, layering up and putting a um, camisole underneath it. So those are some tips. Hey, for Morgan. Yes. Why don't we go ahead? I think that's a great segue to kind of go into the Q&A portion Absolutely. in terms of just, you know, if you have some questions, go ahead and again, uh, click your hand, raise it up. And we'd love to invite you to be a part of this dialogue. See your face come up on the screen uh, and uh, see the whites of your eyes so we can have this conversation. Right. face. Because I see Nick all the time. I'm sick of seeing his bald head. I like, know. I'm so sick of seeing you also. But you know what? The funny thing here is, it, it is a funny thing. Morgan is like, Nick, why are you always FaceTiming me? Because I, I tend yeah. to face. I will text Nick like, hey, let's get ready for this webinar. He will FaceTime me when I, you know, this is like me on the couch at 7 p.m. Like, absolutely, like, in my sweats. Like, and then he'll say something like, you put some makeup on? For what? Like, I'm... <laughs> You FaceTime me, not for like that's it. We need a FaceTime schedule. Like you can't just be FaceTiming folks. Hey man, I, I I gotta make I gotta have proof of life in this in this environment. You know, it could be somebody texting that that's playing Morgan, right? <laughs> Linda wants to know how he can get in contact with you, Morgan. So uh the best way is you can I will put my email in here. Yeah, you can actually type it in the uh, in the comments right there. So then they can get in contact with you. All right. So let's get some questions for Morgan. I know we have a few. Yeah, Hold on. Talk about color and bras. All right. And hair. Tiffany, I'm bringing you in the conversation. All right. I'm a pop out.
Okay, what happened? I'm trying to bring Tiffany in real quick. Okay. Oh, you see? Hi, Tiff. Oh, the maximum representers has been reached. So, okay. While Nick feels, Phil, um, I'm going to Morgan. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pop out real quick okay. so that Tiffany can you can bring in Tiffany so she can ask her question, okay? okay. And then okay. I'll come in a different way. Okay, um, Terrell, All yes, right. go and change for your two o'clock meeting. That's that is. I'm glad this was helpful. I am glad that was helpful. What else is going on here? I love Eloqui, as I mentioned before. It is a great brand for uh, women. Their smallest size is about a 14 and they go up to a 32. They have some amazing, well-made clothes that are so fashionable and fitted. You know, I think a lot of times with plus plus size clothing brands, it's usually like loosey goosey or not very on trend and Eloqui does it beautifully. When outside opens back up again, they've opened a store at Lennox Mall. Um, their customer service is impeccable. I've taken several clients there. Um, I cannot say more more than anything, more nothing but good things about Eloquy. What about hair? Um, we talked about hair a little bit earlier, Marie. Um, whatever works for you. So like if it's pulling your hair up into a bun, if it's using barrettes and clips, if it's not using, not doing a full on head scarf, but if it's doing a cute little scarf, like tying like a bandana around your bangs, that can be super cute. Um, again, it's really is about doing the best that you can right now. Like I know like some of my girlfriends are talking about like they're transitioning from, you know, it's gone so long without a relaxer, what do you do? So just getting creative and giving yourself grace with that, but trying to find something, headbands, head scarves, brushes and gel, ponytails are really great options. Um, blazers. So Morgan, uh, so Morgan, this is me just getting used to the system again. So apparently I'm not going to be able to bring people in because we have reached, you know, the max number of people. Gotcha. And so this is just good for me, you no know, going forward. So Tiffany, if you could ask your, your question in the actual comments and we'll just do questions from the comments as for right now. Yeah. And then the next webinar, I'll have it all figured out. So we'll be able to bring you back in like we did the last time. Okay. Um, Marie's right. talking about blazers. Those are great. Like I know Nick as a, he will, he is notorious for throwing on a blazer. I love that. Dresses are my jam more so than blazers, but I've always been that way. Um, mm -hmm. What else is in here? I think that's it. I think those are all the kind of, this is great conversation. Davida, yes, we will be doing this again. Every week we're going to be doing um, um, brand day. This is where we're bringing in different people, experts to help, you know, just deal with various branding problems, you know. Um, this is a teaching component, you know, as a part of Brandpreneur, I do a whole lot of talking, but I have a whole lot of people that I'm connected with that have some great insights such as Morgan. So yes, uh, every Thursday, 12 noon, uh, we will be doing this. Um, you'll see the email that comes out on Mondays, uh, that will have the link, uh, and the, the subject matter, uh, and the subject matter expert for, for that time frame. Yeah. Um, this question here, um, what mm -hmm. people should all keep preaching should all professional women own. So I'm really controversial on this. I don't believe that there's a set things that women should, every woman should own. This goes back to your personal brand and what you want to be known for. So mm -hmm. I'm a prime example of the fact that I, you know, a lot of stylists and magazines say you should own a good pair of black pants. I don't because I don't really like pants and I also don't wear a lot of black. Um, that's just not for me. I think that sure. it's, really getting clear on what works for you. Like my wardrobe is probably 60, 70% dresses, 30%, 30, 15% tops and 15% pants and blazers. Like dresses are for me. Um, it's really about owning what works for you, um, what your colors are, like what, what you feel best in. That's the general kind of like, I, I love jewelry. I have worked with several stylish women who only own earrings, who only own studs. It's again yeah. that, that personal branding. Um, acceptable hair color for the business world. Hair is hair is a thing, and we, I always get asked all types of questions when it comes to hair. And I think I don't like to put rules on what's quote unquote acceptable anymore. I think it again goes back to your brand and what do you want to be known for. So, of course, if you are working in banking, a, a traditional, a more traditionally conservative business, and you want to dye your hair blue 
just be aware of how people may perceive you with blue hair and are you okay with that? Um, I yeah. think that's, it's again, it's not about rules. It's just being aware of what your personal brand is. And blue hair may not be beneficial to you in banking, but it might be because you might have a niche of people that you are serving and you want to be different than the, than the, than the typical quote unquote banker. So again, it's about yeah. owning your niche and owning your brand and maximizing that to whatever that is. So whatever you feel good in and love and whatever you can maintain, because Lord knows my gray hair, like Nick saw my gray hair yesterday, like this, right? <laughs> whatever you can Boy, maintain it's that season. is acceptable for you. And again, it's about what do you want to be known for? Um, okay. So Morgan, help me out. What about if you are, you know, one of the things that I see and, you know, and this is just me even also mm -hmm. in terms of fluctuation of weight, right? So you have, you know, some things that fit, some things that, that don't quite fit, some things that, you know, are too big. How do you manage your wardrobe when your weight fluctuates? That's a really great question. And that I, I talk about that very candidly in my book. Um, and weight is a very challenging thing for us. And even right now where we're probably not as active as we are, we're eating and we're stress eating. And I encourage people that it's totally okay to keep things within approximate size, like one to two size ranges, keep those in your closet. So like for me right now, I'm like a size 12 ish, 14 ish. I'm not fitting my tens, but I am going, I'm becoming a runner and I'm doing those things to get those down. And on a good day and a good pair of Spanx, I can get into them. However, I've let go of the size eights and the size, also the size 16s that I was wearing for a while. And I tell people to really be honest with, Get rid of the things that when you go into your closet and you don't feel good about that you need to let go of. If, if they trigger for you an emotion of like, oh, I wish I could be this person or I felt so much better about myself when I was wearing this, let that go. Yeah. Do not need that burden. Yeah. And I also tell people, get rid of the things that are too big because that's telling the universe that you plan to get that size again. So that's let, letting go of those things, but keeping things within a size or two range a good tailor can alter a lot of things to make them go up or go down as well. So it's not about getting rid of everything, but just being strategic and giving yourself grace right now. You know, like this is, we have never been in this time of the world in this pandemic. Right. Gain five pounds. That's okay. You know, you can, you Fine. can, you'll, you'll, you'll lose it. You you'll know, as soon as we, as soon as yeah. we get active again, yeah. um, we had a question about this. They want to hear more about your book, Morgan. Oh, my book, my baby. The, I'm really say anything about, about your book, but we want to hear about it. The Worthy my Wardrobe. Book. The Worthy Wardrobe is the title of my book. It is going to be launched in July. And I am doing I've had an amazing pre-sale campaign. And if you, you can go to my website and learn more about the book and the book is a love. Fact, fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll pop out real quick and bring your website up so they can see. Oh, you know, it. I can do it, Nick. I have it right up here. Okay, very good. You do it right here. Just go ahead and do screen share. Um, and the great thing about the thing, uh, I can put this in the chat right here. The Worthy Wardrobe is my love letter to every woman who ever felt like she wasn't good enough, pretty enough, attractive enough. And it really breaks down the deeper things about the book, about our image. So we have to, as women, feel worthy and feel like we are divine and feel like we are worthy of being seen before we can even talk about our clothes. Um, it is something that I, I unpack the idea of perfection. I unpack the idea of our body images and the challenges of size, um, how we show up in work and, and on purpose, and also then about abundance. And so what's been really awesome about this book is that and Tanika is a, a member of I've, you know, I've created a worthy wardrobe community. So if you buy a copy of the book right now, you get private access to a Facebook group where every Monday night I am sharing content from the books so that I get your feedback on. We're doing webinars like these, like last week or last Monday, we talked about the rules that are holding us back from our closet. Um, and it's just been a really great way to learn about our image and think differently about our clothes. So if you go to the Worthy Wardrobe or widersell.com slash book, you can get a copy of it and I'll be shipping it out in July. And Lyndon, I appreciate, yes, it'll be out in July, but there's, um, if you're getting a copy for any woman in your life, she, if you buy a copy, she will get access. Like this week I posted, a part of my chapter six that it's about clean out the closets, which is what's happening right now. And a story mm -hmm. of a 70 year old woman who I lost a game of tug of war with, cause she didn't want to get rid of a suit. So we talk about like, literally I had a rug burn from tugging. Of war with <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Um, I'm really excited about the book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. Monday nights are a lot of fun and, and the, we are yeah. having a great time in there. Yes. 
<laughs> you haven't invited you haven't invited me to a Monday night lit session, Morgan. You will we will invite I've been I've been keeping it women only, but I think you I think you are a renaissance man where you could we will absolutely bring you in, Nick. It will be a lot of fun. <laughs> this so, week so, we're talking about minimalism. Right, 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 right. So um what are what are some parting tips that you could provide people in terms of more specifically your audience? And, you know, I know your, your target audience really is, um, tends to be corporate women. Um, you know, what are some, your top three tips that you give any corporate women in terms of just their look and their image and what they need to be cognizant of just to make the right impression? The first tip that is the basis for everything that I do is you are worthy of being seen. And that, I think is something that I preach to every woman because for so many of us, we think that we're, we have to be the smartest in the room, the hardest working. We do so much and we're like always like the worker bees, but owning our image is something that a lot of us do not take seriously. And so you, people cannot hear your message if you look a mess. So investing in your Oof. image is so important. And so that is the first thing, like that's very good. It's like you have to be comfortable and confident and you are beautiful but no matter your size no matter who you are your complexion all of those things you have so much and your image supports your message so that's number one of those things and number two try color color is the if, if you're scared to be a fashionista and and buy trendy clothes the same cardigan that you're wearing in black also came in red and also came in blue so try absolutely just exploring color again to bring attention to you and to 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 radiate the intelligence and joy and gifts that you have. That's very good. Lyndon Lyndon asks, he's like, when are you gonna do one of these for the brothers, man? You know what? I absolutely have to do one, right? So I, I will definitely put that one on there. And it's gonna be guys only too. No ladies allowed. Well, I I'm, I'm no, no, we let like guys into this one. So see, see Nick. <laughs> Right, right. T Tavia said, people can't hear your message if you look a mess. Boy, I, I, I need you to, that's a whole sermon, Morgan. I need you to understand that, right? That right there is a whole sermon, all right? right. When I, when I, when, You're going to have to pass the offering on that one. Yeah. It, it, that, that is so right. I mean, I've seen some people, I just can't, I'm like, I can't hear you. You can I'm be like, the most brilliant even... person, the most brilliant person. <laughs> And if you like, and so many women, like you were saying up all these nights working on this amazing PowerPoint, and then you get up there and people are just looking at why, why your skirt's too short or why, like why your pants, right. like it, like all of your work is just gone. So it's gone. It just, it just, it, and, it's, and it's a shame. So, you know, and, and the other thing that I deal with a lot is uh, with the whole cleavage thing. And I know you talked about that a little bit, but you know, it's one of those things. If if you if you're gonna feel uncomfortable, like you know, just you know, I know you I know you proud, right? And you, but you know, you might want to back to intention. Like, what do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known for right. your or do you want to be known for your brains? Like, then there's nothing wrong with owning your pretty and what. And I talk about that in the book. But again, mm -hmm. being aware and balancing what that end message is going to be. Like, women pay for breasts, so there's nothing wrong with them, and absolutely, yeah. like. Be and so do guys. Let's be clear. <laughs> right, right. It's not for women to have breasts, but just being aware of what the appropriate level and what you want to be known for. That's just that's what these branding sessions that I'm offering are all about: is getting you clear on what the message is that you want to be known for. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, there are a couple of more offers that I want to put out there, and this is just you know one that I just make myself available to. Um, you know, especially during the season that we have. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions in terms of um, what do I need to do to position myself for after COVID-19? Mm -hmm. um, Morgan, you know, one of the things that I keep on hearing is that um, a lot of people are just going to be looking to make some shifts and transitions. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, um, un unvoluntarily having to make some shifts and transitions. So with that, it's going to be very important that you just have an understanding in terms of just what do you want to be known for? And how do you want to make people feel? And, you know, during this time frame, I know it's it's my objective, it's Morgan's objective here as well to give as much information as we can, because uh, we're never going to have this opportunity again where we are all collectively, you know, isolated. But while you're in isolation, I encourage you. And every time I have a platform, I say this, take this time to grow and develop 
get on that webinar like you are today uh invest in invest in yourself and do something challenge yourself build something right um if you ever wanted to start that side business go ahead and do that mm -hmm. right or at least begin the laying the groundwork for it now is now more than ever is a season of purpose what are you purposed to do right yeah. and how are you presenting yourself? The, I was on a on a on a call earlier today, Morgan, and it was I was working with an executive, and she's getting ready to transition out of out of a company, mm -hmm. and you know she was like, "Well, my company is going to put together this this letter that talks to you know what you know what I'm doing." I was like, "No, no, no, you write it. You write your own. You story put it together. You control the narrative. The thing that I want you to hear, if you can hear my voice, do not give anybody else ownership of your brand. You own it. It's yours, right?" And you have to control that narrative. And a part of that controlling that narrative is through uh, how you present in the world and what you're giving out in the world. So uh, if you need uh, anything in terms of just advice, you know, I offer myself brand new or 10 minutes talk, Morgan, I'll put your information up here again. Go ahead, Morgan. One thing I do want to mention, I think that you are so great at is a lot of the folks who are corporate, we have often before I became a business owner, we thought of ourselves as our job, like my job, yeah. title, like me, who I am is linked to my job title. And I think this is a great right. time to assess who you are and build your personal brand outside of whoever is writing your checks right now. Um, so like, yes, give yourself grace, give yourself, you know, there's a, it's a challenging time, but be very clear of what your, you, your brand is because the job might, I mean, this is a big lesson for a lot of, I've talked about this in some podcasts. Right. The job that wrote your checks and who you've been identifying as might not be there. And so who are you outside of that title? So Nick does such a great job of getting you ready to show up online and in person as you. And I had to learn that as my own business owner. Like I am my brain and I am my business. And that's a gift. And that is a blessing. And the more that you're aware of that, the better you'll be. Right. And it, it's your competitive advantage more Absolutely. than the, the, the thing. There is no other person like you. And you, you accepting all of your flaws, you accepting the things that are good about you, but more specifically, you understanding your superpowers and being unafraid to walk in them and show them off. Show them. The thing I've seen with, with corporate is that there is, they teach you to be too humble. It's okay to be humble, or as they say in black church, humble, okay? But being too humble is a problem because what happens here is you just become another person right there ain't nothing other about you you are exceptional and so you have to walk in that and it's all about shifting mindset i'm not saying you got to show off but you have to show up how about that show up and own your executive that's a, about goes back to executive presence and really knowing the skills and experiences that you have and not being anybody's best kelp secret you preach on me all the time about that like getting more visible of what you have and sharing your expertise um before yeah. we talk about linden, linden please, another please, question yeah email me or have her your wife email me um i would love to chat with her um and and how to and how to start with that absolutely um or linkedin we could that'd be an honor to talk to her and then we have one person, Mary Ryland. She wanted to understand what the third tip was. She oh, three. okay. So owning owning yourself and, and getting your mindset right is just everything. Wearing color is the second step. And then making sure that your clothes fit properly. So fit is like whatever, like, like being aware of your body shape, accepting your size, getting a tailor, like with curvy bodies or with any body, like male or female, making sure that your clothes fit you impeccably is really, really important. Absolutely. Well, Morgan, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Thank you so much for joining our webinar. Morgan, I hate saying this. Oh, wait, I'm going to hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. <laughs> this is Good your job. big one you never wanted to tell you you did. <laughs> Good job, Morgan. Good job. I can't hear you. <laughs> I said good job. And I ain't going to say it again now. Thank you, Nick, for creating this platform for, for everyone. I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for joining. And tomorrow, 3 p.m. LinkedIn Live. It's Wait a Brand Minute. What we're talking about tomorrow is your LinkedIn profile. Um, we talk about website optimization all the time uh, in terms of how to be seen by Google. But did you know that you can do the same optimization with your LinkedIn profile to be seen by others on the platform? 
Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to talk about a few tips and things that you can do so that you can get noticed just by making a few modifications to your LinkedIn profile. So if you have not seen it, by all means, do that. I even did a little promotional video today, uh, Morgan, where I'm, I'm in a gold chain and I'm singing online. So I can't wait for you to see that one. That was a lot of fun. <sighs> Oh Lord! Like you are the cre like you are the creative scientist. Like in literally in your basement right now, just creating all types. I'm, I'm of just. Cre I, I ain't got nothing else to do but work and create and, and not not bug my family to death. Right? I know they so want I'm trying to do people. all of. Them. They want you. I'm just trying to stay out of trouble. What do they say? What do they say? They say the aisle mine is the devil's playground. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep my mind together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morgan, I appreciate you. Thank you, everyone, for joining.